Uh, welcome, everybody. I do have the YouTube chat up here, so let me bring that back up to the front for myself doo -doo -doo, so that I can see the conversations. Hope everybody's doing well. Thank you for joining wherever you are. Who is Dave? Yeah, let's. Who, who the heck am I? Um, so I am principal program manager uh, with .NET, focusing on the Xamarin SDKs. So that's iOS, Android uh, forms, uh, as well as working with components. And uh, yeah, newcomers are always welcome. It's good to see everybody uh, in the chat, of course and your little profile pictures. Um, so I've been with Microsoft now for a little over three and a half years. Uh, before that, I was uh, running my own company for about 10, 15 years. Uh, I lose track of time, um, which was doing uh, a variety of software development for creative agencies, for enterprises, um, a lot of web, a lot of interactive, some uh, point, of, point of sale type stuff. Like in, you go into Best Buy and you go see that touch screen with the new Nikon camera. I may or may not have built that. Um, uh, and then, of course, a lot of mobile, and Xamarin became a passion of mine. I had enjoyed C Sharp when I moved from ASP to ASP.NET. Um, and so, yeah, I ended up doing uh, more and more .NET and, uh, and had really enjoyed being part of Microsoft and making these products better for you. So let's, uh, let me go over to my slides now, and let's stop looking at that. So the first thing I want to address is, wait. Are you pulling a silver light on us? Are you breaking all of our apps? Uh, have you just upended the world? Uh, no, that's absolutely not what's happening. Um, and I, I, you know, this is a real question. We get this thing a lot. If you've been in the in the .NET Microsoft ecosystem for a long time, um, then and you did any uh, form of silver light, and then you saw it go away. Uh, you, you probably have some fear. Uh, you see the name of something changing and you're like, oh no, what just happened? No, uh, your Xamarin Forms projects will continue to work. Uh, we're building migration paths for all of those. And uh, this is really, you could think of it as Xamarin 6. It's the next evolution of Xamarin. Um, yes, it is a new name. And so why would we give it a new name? Well, there are reasons. And, and one of the reasons is, is to have people give it a fresh look because we have the highest customer satisfaction we've ever had. Uh, I saw recent numbers and we're on par with things like Blazor, which is hot. Um, and so we know that we're moving in the right direction. And so how do we accelerate and catalyze that uh, and help you as developers feel like, okay, we're on the right track here. We're on the, we're on the train moving in the right direction, right? Um, so there will be migration. It'll be easy. Uh, we'll upgrade your projects. Most of these upgrades are really more .NET 6 related things. Um, but, you know, there's there are things in, in Xamarin with .NET MAUI that we're doing that uh, you'll want to migrate to to get the benefits of. So I know change is hard uh, because this past uh, pandemic, <laughs> we're marking our lives in pandemics now, uh, um, my daughter got married. And so uh, we had a wedding and all along the way, it's like, are we going to have five people or are we going to have 500 people? And we didn't have anywhere near 500 people. Of course, you can't, you can't gather that many people together. Um, but we had a good, safe wedding. My daughter got married, my eldest, and moved on. And that's a big life change, right? I mean, if any of you have been through that, you know that that's, that's a big deal. And then one week later, I sent my son in the blue mask over on the far right, far right, your left, my right, your left, I don't know. Uh, and uh, we sent him off to Rala s &T to start studying uh, computer science. And uh, so, you know, get one kid married out of the house, another kid a week later goes off to college uh, in the middle of a pandemic. All these new protocols, a lot of fear in the news. I understand change and change can be uh, disconcerting. So one of the things that I really want to bring to you with this presentation is to let you know where our head's at, why we're doing the things that we're doing, and kind of give you a status report. Where are we today? When can you expect to start getting bits and things like that? So perhaps uh, it would be more calming if we said, instead of introducing .NET MAUI, what we're really here to talk about is the evolution of Xamarin. If you're a Xamarin developer, perhaps that feels a little more comfortable to you. Um, so let's let's start from that position. Cool, we're good. Everybody good? I see a, a smile in the chat. I don't know if that was for me or not. 
Um, cause I think I'm actually a little delayed. That's cool. All right. So .NET Maui, uh, what is it? It's the multi-platform app UI. So it's mobile and desktop. We are integrating Xamarin into .NET. Um, so we're adopting .NET 6, the common BCL that everybody else is using. Um, cause right now you get kind of a mixture of what Mono provides and what .NET has. Um, and so we're going to all be using the same thing. We're moving into the .NET org. So Maui, Android, Mac iOS is all going to be there. We are adopting common .NET experiences. If you're a .NET developer and you use the .NET new, .NET run, .NET publish, and all that sort of thing, you can expect to have the same experiences now when you're building mobile and desktop applications with .NET Maui. Visual Studio Code is supported for things like, uh, I believe Blazor can use it, certainly some other web uh, things, console apps, and plenty of other .NET uh, workloads work in VS Code. So if you can uh, expect to, you can expect to use those with .NET MAUI as well. And as I mentioned, it's Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows are our targets. And then uh, we'll talk a bit more about how and why this works. And perhaps Clancy covered a lot of these details in his presentation. But uh, the changes that we are uh, implementing are going to allow for modern app models like Blazor and Comet. Now, that doesn't mean that your MVVM is going away or that you need to abandon XAML or that XAML is suddenly uh, you know, end of life or anything like that. That's not the case. So what are our goals? What in the world are we up to? So quality is first and foremost. Um, we hear this loud and clear. Yes, our customer satisfaction is, is hitting the highest marks we've ever received, but the clear feedback is, hey, we want some stable releases. It's awesome that you're shipping us new releases every six weeks. It's awesome that they have new features that we desperately need to solve the paper cuts and the productivity roadblocks that we have. But you know, for Pete's sake, uh, stop, stop with the regression, regression, stop with the bugs, fix those things. So we are, are, are setting out a roadmap here of 12 months of quality. Um, we are going to be focusing on that. Yes, we are uh, revamping the controls and the renderers, which we'll talk about. Um, but we are going to also spend a significant amount of time uh, cleaning house and improving the quality of life for all of our developers. We're going to reorganize the project structure and make it a whole lot easier to navigate and understand. That's primarily going to be helpful for contributors, but I think for all developers using the platform so you can find where stuff is. Uh, we're also going to be standardizing uh, naming uh, class structure and things like that. So uh, right now, if you bounce between iOS, Android, and uh, UWP platform folders, for example, you'll see different things, and it can be hard to navigate. Performance uh, is the other big thing that we really want to touch. Um, and so this is, hey, can we get our cold starts, especially on Android, at or under 100 milliseconds consistently, no matter the size of the app? Now, uh, a lot of this depends on you and the code that you write. Um, and so as far as it depends on us, uh, the framework maintainers and the framework itself, we're going to do everything we can to put you on the happy path to, to getting your apps running under that bar. Um, you know, if you look at popular apps on your phone today, many of them don't even hit that mark. Um, they're, they're much slower to load, but we want to put you on the best footing possible. We want to have responsive animations and transitions. Um, and I say we want to have these things. As I mentioned, this is driven by your feedback. Um, I'm looking at Brian's thing here and trying to understand what he's saying, but I'll figure that out. <laughs> Uh, and then we're reducing view nesting um, is a key thing to improving performance. And so uh, part of our renderer work is uh, around that, uh, removing that wrapping. We did it previously with something called fast renderers. Um, that was the initiative we called it. And so now we're calling them slim renders because we're, we're, we're going on a diet. <laughs> Um, so design, uh, this is a key thing that we hear a lot. We want to make it easier for you to deliver good looking apps out of the box. And so, uh, providing you with a default theme template that takes those native controls, but gives them a good shine. Um, and so that you don't feel like you need to start from scratch. I mean, if you go over to a iOS or Android studio, uh, Xcode or Android studio, and you drop controls on the UI, 
in iOS, you're going to get bare bones iOS controls, which is what you get in Xamarin Forms, and they don't look super pretty. But we can easily give you a theme to get going with that. Um, and so we're going to build out the controls to allow that to be done. Um, we're also going to uh, bring easier control extensibility. So what this means is if there's a property, whether it's platform specific or otherwise, um, you want to add some custom uh, behavior to an existing control. The new handler and mapper uh, architecture allows you to easily do that right in your cross-platform code. You don't have to go create three different classes and platform specifics or custom renders. And then quick cross-platform templating. Um, Cross-platform templating uh, coming everywhere. You'll see that in Xamarin Forms 5 with the radio buttons, and we're going to introduce more. And then these are the platforms that we are targeting and bringing feature parity to those. Um, on the desktop, you know, feature parity isn't all that we are looking to do. Um, they're certainly introducing what are the desktop patterns uh, and behaviors that are not mobile specific and that we can introduce, you know, things like uh, multi-window, for example. We do actually have multi-window uh, implemented for some customers today. Um, if you are familiar with the Bull Tech Finance app, uh, and I can speak openly about that because they themselves are publishing YouTube videos about how they're using Skia Sharp for their desktop apps. Um, they are using some multi-window stuff that uh, uh, Microsoft developers help them to implement. All right, so a little bit more about these key areas. Uh, so these are from the most recent um, customer survey that hopefully everybody filled out. If you didn't fill it out, you still have uh, a couple of days. Um, I'll probably turn it off. Actually, let's say this. Uh, I'm going to turn it off at the end of the day. <laughs> um, so go find my Twitter account, uh, David Ortnow. Go find the, the uh, Survey Monkey link, and you can go fill this out. Um, but in terms of app performance, how do, how do developers feel about this? You can see that moderately satisfied uh, and extremely satisfied. You know, that's, that's okay. Um, that's good, you know, certainly. Um, but for those who really, really care about it, uh, you know, it starts to become uh, less and less satisfying. So we know that we have work to do here. Um, on average, we're measuring about a, a second and a half startup time on Android for normal devices. Um, and so what can we do to get a sub-second on these things? UI responsiveness, app size, as I mentioned, really what we're looking at, and I've been talking a lot with uh, Jonathan Dick and others on our team that are working towards .NET 6. Um, because of the new BCL and things like that, what we're really looking for right now is to maintain our app size, um, especially on Android. Now, the app size on Android is the lowest it's been in a very long time, um, and uh, perhaps ever. And actually, app size barely even registered on the concerns that developers had in this most recent survey. Um, productivity is key. We hear this from a lot of developers wanting to know, hey, that I can use my .NET experience across all the different workloads. You know, not everything is going to translate, but I can be productive and useful anywhere I go. This is also important for recruiting. Um, if you work at a company that's concerned about where am I going to hire this next Xamarin or .NET MAUI developer, um, essentially, if we can build in the same experiences to our workload that, uh, that they're used to doing for web and things like that, then they're going to be able to step in and be more productive more quickly in the mobile and the desktop applications. So that's a key thing. Uh, speed to market, wanting to make sure that you can uh, reuse all the same skills as well as the technology investment. And then platform reach, of course, wanting to make sure that you can hit the platforms that are most important to you. Um, you've probably seen, if you've been a Xamarin developer over any period of time, uh, that we, uh, we it, it's a, it's ca you're capable, <laughs> let's say it this way, you're capable of hitting a lot of platforms, but they are not heavily trafficked areas, and so you don't get tons of good support there. So we're working to be more clear on here are the things that we are supporting as core platforms. The other stuff works but you're on your own really to, to do what you need to do for those particular platforms or specific devices. Design. Uh, so I mentioned that design is important. Um, the biggest frustration we hear from customers or one of the biggest frustrations is when, in terms of custom renderers. Because you have to write so much code, because you immediately are into a whole other API that you need to understand, um, it can be very frustrating. I'm a little disappointed to see just how many custom renderers are still out there in the wild. Um, and I believe this represents roughly 1,400 applications. Um, 
because we also asked developers, how many applications do you uh, currently have or support in the, in, in market? Um, so unless everybody lied to us, um, that's what this represents. Um, it's still, that's it's a lot more custom renderers than I think I would like to see or you would like to see, because typically it means that there is a gap or something missing in the native API. Um, but the fact that you can have a custom render obviously is great. Consistent look and feel is really important. So um, we asked this question, how many developers need uh, exactly the same design, mostly the same design, um, mostly unique or other? Um, other, uh, the answers there uh, were basically on one project it was this, on another project it was that kind of thing. Um, so I think the, the, the key takeaway here is that we can do and should do more to make those top two easier to do out of the box, especially without writing those custom renderers. All right, so um, I want to throw this slide in here as that strong reassurance to you. If you are a XAML lover and you use Xamarin Forms <clears throat> and you have concern that we've suddenly moved all the cheese and you're going to have to go relearn some new way to write your applications. No, uh, you're going to be able to move your existing projects forward that look like this, um, as well as if you're using C Sharp UI, uh, you know, helper extensions and things like that. That all comes forward. We're not radically changing the control toolkit API. All these XAML features will continue to exist and be improved. So please be assured uh, that your stuff is good to go. And this is still going to be the leading uh, way in which you build applications uh, in the next evolution of Xamarin, okay? So uh, be confident there. We know that this is where a lot of developers are super productive and successful and you love it. And so we're not looking to, to derail that. We wanna make sure we continue to capitalize on that, push it forward and make it better. All right, so a little bit more about what design is gonna look like uh, coming up. So we hear a lot, hey, the, the visual material stuff that you did is cool. Uh, Dan's asking, uh, is there now a clicked parameter? Uh, no, I don't think so. Not in this one. Um, but hey, you know where to submit suggestions. Will Shell work on UWP? Yes. Yep. That is all coming together. It will also work on Mac OS, which I know you didn't ask, but certainly you want it because you're doing desktop. <laughs> Um, yes. All right. So in visual, we, as I mentioned, you know, material was a good step in the right direction, but um, a couple of things about that material implementation. Um, it requires uh, native controls from Google and they are often, um, uh, you know, it's just one more thing, right? Uh, it's not only one more thing to be maintained and bound and, and kept up to date, um, but it's also, it adds quite a bit of size to your applications. So are there things that we could do to take this concept of visual, um, but make it much more extensible and repurposable for other um, design patterns? And really what this comes down to is if I need my control to be able to look Cupertino or Fluent, uh, and Fluent's probably a better example because it's kind of not native to either of the mobile platforms, um, I should be able to do that all in the, Xam, uh, in the Xamarin API, in the XAML API, in the .NET MAUI API. Um, I shouldn't have to go doing custom renderers. And so Visual should be able to support all of those styling uh, needs. So you can see here, we've got some prototypes uh, of how we can do this and make it super easy. And this is all done with cross-platform code. Um, what you're seeing here, the, the what's behind those entry controls and button controls, it's all cross-platform with templating. Um, and so we're not using any native renderers here. Now, the big question is, is, is this extensive? It certainly is easier for you to template and control the style of. Absolutely, 100%. Um, uh, is, the, is the control going to be performant enough is the question that we really need to prove out in the early phases of the .NET MAUI release previews. Um, and then, of course, everybody loves a good switch, and they look totally different on those three different platforms three different design systems. So I figured that was a good one to show. I don't have the code for that, but you know, you know what XAML looks like at this point. A couple other things that we're looking to expand upon, and we heard this uh, at the Xamarin Developer Summit uh, a year and, and days ago um, that Dan put on down there in Houston. And we had a wonderful time. It was beautiful. It was hot. And uh, we had a little thing where we asked people, what is the hardest stuff for you to style that you would want us to fix? And the tabs was uh, tabs and navigation were the two top ones, right? 
Um, and, uh, and so what we can do is we can essentially have a drop in replacement for the native tabs that are really hard to position, really hard to make consistent between platforms. We can give you a cross platform, uh, control that will allow you to put it wherever you want, template it, however you want, um, style it, change the font. Um, we had a new engineer join the Xamarin Forms team uh, recently out of college. And uh, she said, how in the world do I change the font on the tab? <laughs> and we all know, as uh, those of us who've been using Xamarin Forms for a long time, or Xamarin in general, that's a pain. You got to go down to the native platform and do all that uh, jumping through hoops. So we can make that a whole lot easier. Uh, the app bar. And so these controls um, in particular, the tab bar and the app bar, um, we're going to look to bake them into .NET MAUI, but we're also going to look to bring them into the Xamarin Community Toolkit. Um, and by look look to do that, what I mean is I'm going to hassle Javier until he submits PRs. That's that's how that works. Um, but but yeah, here I think the key thing is is we need to enlighten essentially these apps to be able to be drop in replacements into a shell application, for example, so that it can do the right thing as a navigation bar, so it can do the right thing as a tab control. Um, and you, you don't have to circumvent things. Uh, you can continue to use shell the way you use shell today. Um, so what about full customization? Uh, if you saw my Xamarin Forms 5 blog post, you saw this. That bottom uh, image here on the radio buttons is actually the Fluent uh, design for a, I think they call it a choice group. Um, and so this is me showing, hey, with templating, you can easily replicate some of these uh, design patterns. Um, and so this is super powerful and you've seen other XAML platforms that do this, um, but we've never really had this in Xamarin Forms on the controls themselves. You've had it for templated controls that you yourself have built, um, but you haven't had it on, exam for example, a radio button or a button or uh, anything else. Um, and so this is kind of where we're heading with things. We think this is a great solution primarily because guess what? This is actually what you developers have already started doing in the wild for years. And so if it works for you and you're being successful with it and you're happy with it, then why wouldn't it be good to support it first class in XamarinForms.net Maui, right? So uh, control templates, if you've seen a control template before, you know what it looks like. Uh, you define one of these puppies in your resource dictionary. Um, you can, of course, do it directly uh, in line with your controls. You can just describe your visual state groups and, uh, and then you can uh, go to town, uh, building out the beautiful UI that you desire to have. So it's really cool. Um, I've been really, really happy with it. Uh, as a matter of fact, I was so happy with it that my first draft of the last blog post sounded like a celebration of Radio Button. And then somebody said, you know, Radio Button is actually not that interesting of a control. And I was like, yeah, you're right. But the control templates are awesome. Um, does cross-platform feature parity include supporting tools? In particular, will Xamarin UI test, or whatever it will be called, work for Windows as well as Android and iOS? John, that's a great question. Um, it's really a different conversation that we need to have around UI testing altogether um, because uh, somebody needs to, well, let's say it this way. Um, do you want to use UI tests or you just want to know that there is a UI testing framework that is uh, actively supported, maintained, and works well with .NET MAUI applications? Um, so I, I think that's probably where we need to steer the conversation. I don't know that UI test um, has the, the support and ownership that, it, that you probably need it to have. Um, so we'll, we'll need to, uh, s somebody needs to have that conversation. It's not, it's not a product that I directly uh, own. Uh, and, uh, someone needs to actually own it. Yes, Dan, exactly. <laughs> One UI test framework that works across. Yeah. Well, I mean, and the thing, John, is that we need it too, right? I mean, we have hundreds and hundreds, if not over a thousand uh, UI tests that we run, many of them on every PR. And so we want one and we want one that runs reliably. Right, that's a big thing with UI tests. We want that runs reliably. Um, we deal way too often with failing UI tests for unknown reasons, and then you just rerun it and it works. Um, I don't know if that's a UI test thing. I don't know if it's an iOS thing. Certainly, things like iOS nine and ten have tons of problems. But 
I'm speaking out of my depth at this point. So let's get back to the slides. Um, so I want to talk about slim renderers. Um, so this is, a, this is a phrase that I'm pretty sure I coined, so I'm to blame for this, but I like to make things fast and small. Um, so uh, let's talk about uh, some of the terms that you probably have been hearing. Uh, let's try to define them to make sure that we're on the same page. I ran these uh, descriptions, these definitions by Shane Newville, as you might know as Shane Man from the, uh, the latest Sharp NATO blog, which I just died laughing when I saw that. Um, Control, it's the cross-platform UI element. So I'll, I'll, in control, you know, it certainly could be a platform control. I even use it down there at the bottom. Um, but primarily in the context of this, uh, we're talking about that cross-platform piece. Um, and then handlers, these are the uh, classes responsible for applying the cross-platform request. Hey, I want to change the background color to the actual platform control. Um, the mapper is a dictionary of all the uh, properties that are in the cross-platform control and what is in the handler. And then the renderer is really the platform control implementation that you've been using in Xamarin Forms, which really doesn't have a place in its current form in the new .NET MAUI. So they are going away. Um, now I say renderers are going away. Those of you who have custom renderers are probably like, oh no, what does that mean for all of my custom renderers? Your custom renderers will still work. We have a we have a, a way in which they will still work using a, a compatibility package. However, uh, we will be encouraging you to migrate those to the new pattern. Um, and please informing us all through the previews how that's going so we can make it easier and easier and easier. But we ourselves are going to be using that uh, compatibility for our control gallery and things, which I'll be demoing at .NET Conf, quick plug. And I've got a slide later on that. By the way, I am the last session of the day. I know there's a closing session, so I plan to go as long as, as y'all stay, stay here. <laughs> Fair warning. I don't know when I'm going to stop. All right, so that's the glossary of terms. Um, so let's talk a little bit about architecture. And this is really, uh, hopefully for you, very similar to what you know of Xamarin and Xamarin Forms. Um, but I wanted to, to put this together and try to describe it a bit more clearly, because uh, I think a lot of people have a hard time I see a cursor on the screen. I was just trying to figure if that was me or not. Um, uh, I, people have a hard time sometimes explaining what exactly uh, Xamarin is and does from a technical standpoint. So you've got your app code at the top there, right? This is the code that you're primarily interacting with. You're writing XAML, you're writing C Sharp, uh, you're describing your UI, you're writing your um, middle tier layer, interacting with web services and things like that. And primarily, you want to be interacting with the framework that you're working with, and that's .NET MAUI. So you're working against the button API, you're working with a stack layout or a grid and that sort of thing. But when you get stuck, then you have to go to do something like number two. Uh, you're writing a platform specific, you're writing effects, you're writing custom renderers. Um, <laughs> I know, I am here now, Dan. Um, and, uh, and, and so you can do these things, right? You can plunk down, I guess, is a way to say it, into that Xamarin Android, iOS, Mac, WinUI layer, and you can work against that API when the .NET MAUI API doesn't have what you need, or maybe it's something very specific to that platform. And then of course, .NET MAUI itself is doing that work to talk to those platform APIs. Now that layer there are the bindings. Those are the .NETified bindings to those things. Uh, and of course, WinUI itself is already a .NET um, library for us to use. And then but beyond that, everything is writing on and running inside of the .NET 6 BCL and runtime, which then is hosted within, compiled down to native code that runs on Android, iOS, Mac OS, and Windows. Um, so the key here, um, and the main thing that I want to accentuate is I, we want to do as much as possible to keep you right there in one. That's where you're most productive. That's where we can hot reload all your bits um, and make you a happy developer. And so that's one of the key goals uh, of doing .NET MAUI. So uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about the architecture here. 
Um, because this, when I saw Shane uh, present this at the uh, Reactive UI uh, event, and I have a link to it later in the slides here, it's also up on YouTube. This really helped me, actually. It really helped things click for me. So right now, you've got a button renderer in Xamarin Forms, and that's your native platform. That's in the iOS, Android code, Mac OS, uh, Windows code. Um, and it has a reference to the Xamarin Forms button. It knows about the Xamarin Forms button. That means that it's tightly coupled, and that also means that assembly scanning is happening, which can be slow. And this is a reason, not necessarily the biggest reason, but it is a reason why your apps might be slow to load uh, from a cold start, um, as well as why you may have heard warnings of, hey, reduce the number of uh, assemblies dependencies in your application so that you're not scanning over and over and over again to look for renderers. Um, people work around that using Fody Weaver to do uh, interesting things, but this is this is just describing kind of what the world looks like today in Xamarin Forms. Um, it's also really difficult to reach down into the platform, as mentioned. This is that uh, number two from the previous slide, where you're writing a platform uh, specific call and then doing something like that. So in .NET MAUI, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to decouple the renderers, and this work is underway right now. You're, we're decoupling the renderers from Xamarin Forms. So now we've inverted things. The Xamarin Forms button now knows that there is this I button. Doesn't know how it works. It knows what it does. Doesn't know how it does what it does. And the key cool thing here is that that I button really just maps everything with that mapper that I mentioned before to the button handler. And the button handler is where all the work happens. There's no reflection happening here. There's no notify property change happening here um, in the buttons themselves. This is all very straightforward. So we're, we're really hoping and expecting and early indications are good that we're going to see performance improvement there. But what this also allows, because we've now decoupled the actual button from the Xamarin Forms architecture and knowledge and all that jazz, now you can start adding things like, oh, a comment button. That comment button can do all the MVU model view update things that James Clancy dreams up without having to worry about Xamarin Forms introducing some behavior that he doesn't care about um, because it's an MVVM thing or it's some kind of data binding. Um, <laughs> yes, interfaces. Uh, fabulous. Sorry, I'm reacting to a, a comment in the chat from Brian. <laughs> Speaker randomly yells interfaces. Uh, fabulous button. You know, hey, if the F Sharp team is like, we really want to uh, be able to do some things, but we're kind of hamstrung by the way Xamarin Forms is doing it, they can go directly to the I button. Reactive UI can have their own button. So this is a very uh, exciting re-architecture here that we think is going to energize some, some cool um, innovation within the .NET community, we're hoping, certainly within the Microsoft.NET teams. All right, so as I mentioned, it's performance-minded, cross-platform projects easily register those custom handlers. So instead of doing assembly scanning, we're going to have a registrar. Um, as a matter of fact, this is already in. Um, in one form or another in the control gallery. So we're already registering controls directly. It's just an explicit registration. You can override them. You can do them by platform using if defs. You can use multi-targeting in your project so that you don't have to ever see an if def. Um, so there are multiple ways you can do it. The samples here that Shane put together, and thank you, Shane, for these wonderful slides, um, are using the if defs because it's clear to understand on the screen. Zero runtime assembly scanning. Got to love that. All right, so what about that nasty platform code that you have to write? Um, and what will this look like in XAML? I don't know. Um, this is something that needs to be worked out. Um, we know what platform uh, specifics look like in XAML today. You add your XML and S. Um, but instead of doing all of this to be able to get to platform specific things, whether they're custom renderers or platform specifics, you can directly in your code access the view mapper and just add a new handler to the view mapper. And it can be specific to a particular control. Or as you see here, it's done at the bottom on any iView. So any control that extends from iView, which is all of them, um, you can go ahead and just tie into that and do things. Or you can get that native view directly from the handler. So 
in your cross-platform code, using multi-targeting, using if defs, uh, you have direct access to all those things. Now, I want to emphasize that this is certainly much easier than a custom render or a platform specific. However, um, I we still firmly believe that if these things need to be done a lot, then they should be in the .NET MAUI API for those controls, right? You shouldn't need to even have this knowledge of what a text view is on Android. Uh, you should be able to use the, the label, the entry, whatever. All right, so this is the, the one I mentioned from Shane. Probably just easier to uh, search for Shane Newville.net Maui Reactive UI in the YouTube UI. Don't do it now, though. Don't do it now because we're not done. We've got more to talk about. Um, but later, you should totally watch that. Great presentation. He even shows some, some performance. Uh, he shows the dope test, which was a bit of a troll, but there you go. All right. So uh, some of the other things that are coming in .NET 6 for .NET MAUI and Xamarin developers is single project. So with single project, this is going to alleviate several points of frustration uh, that developers have, in particular new developers. But I think that even for seasoned developers, you're going to find some things here in single project that are going to be very attractive to you. Um, so today, what you have in that picture over there is like one of my uh, recent solutions. You've got your cross-platform library. You've got your Android head project. You've got your iOS head project. Um, and that's a lot of code. And it's a lot of different nougats that you now need to maintain across all of those things, which can be a hassle. You can easily descend into uh, levels of nougat hell. Um, trying to resolve different dependencies and things like that. But couldn't we make this a whole lot easier? And the answer is absolutely we can. Um, so we can render this all down into a single project and we can still surface all the platform specific things that you need. Like there's an info P list in iOS. We can't just get rid of that stuff. That stuff is still needed, but we can um, abstract it away and make it a whole lot easier for you to deal with these things. So uh, for images, fonts, platform specific code, those are the three key areas that we're going to be focusing on. Uh, images is pretty straightforward. Uh, we're going to take what John Dick has done with the resizeitizer NuGet package. If you haven't seen that, you can go use that today. Um, and we can bring all your resources together and generate uh, the different DPI sizes and whatnot that you need for all the different platforms that you're supporting. Um, fonts, uh, and much of this work is already in Xamarin Forms today, but we can make it even easier here, where you can embed your font directly into that shared project, and you don't have to worry about wiring it up for the different platforms or where it needs to be located, all that sort of thing, and it just works. Um, and then platform code. You know, Again, this is the stuff that we've been looking at, um, whether you're using multi-targeting or if defing. So here's an example of how this might look. And these are custom, customer research is happening here. If you're interested in this and, and you have feedback on how you think this ought to look and work, you can reach out to uh, Jake Kirsch, who is a PM on our team. Oops. Oh, I see what the problem is. <laughs> Sorry, I'm trying to move this in case Carrie is chatting at me. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, so Jake, uh, we'd love to talk to you about this, um, but we're also going to be talking to new .NET developers or, or people who might consider coming to Xamarin and .NET. That's a key area for us. Uh, as a matter of fact, if you saw uh, the community stand up from yesterday, we had Theodora on and we interviewed her about her summer project where she learned Xamarin and built out an app. And, um, you know, it's interesting when you talk to new developers that kind of on board with it, they definitely fall in love with Xamarin and Xamarin Forms, uh, mostly. You know, it's not for everybody, let's be honest. But she she fell in love with it. And, uh, and the, but I asked her, I'm like, what were the friction points? And she made a comment that data binding was, you know, kind of a hard thing to get her head around. Um, so anyway, that's neither here nor there for this particular uh, single project topic, but it's these kinds of questions to those kinds of developers where we find that uh, some of the nuances of doing multi-platform development can be really overwhelming and be a roadblock when you're getting started. So um, this is one way that you could separate out your platform specific code. Certainly, uh, we aren't going to tie developers into any of these things. We want to provide a sensible default to start. Um, and then uh, it, for your needs, you can certainly uh, take control of the reins. You can go into the CS prod. You can do whatever you need to do um, using the rules of what multi-targeting allows. 
And then uh, I mentioned fonts and images. So providing a, uh, a reasonable, smart, consistent place for where those ought to exist in your projects. Again, um, this will be kind of a default, uh, perhaps this, but we won't tie you into it. If you really, really, really want to put your images right next to your XAML or your, your view file, uh, we certainly won't block you from doing that. I see no reason to do that. Ben, took you a while to get your head around data binding too? Yeah. Yeah, I remember back in the early days when I first did data binding in Adobe Flex, it blew my mind. I was like, this is what? What now? Because I was so used to just having a loop where I just set my own stuff. Um, and then to go to this kind of more of an asynchronous world of notifying property changes and uh, handling all that stuff, it was weeks of my head hurting. <laughs> Um, and then once you get through it and you start having success, you're like, oh, and then you have amnesia, right? You kind of forget how painful it was. Um, so I think it's it's helpful to get get around. Here's my encouragement. Here's David's encouragement for the for the moment. Get around some new developers. Go go find somebody who knows nothing about what you're doing but wants to build mobile apps and talk to them, learn what their experience is, watch the frustration on their faces. Um, there's going to be frustration, and there's no doubt about it, but um, it's a good reminder of how many things we take for granted as being easy uh, were not so easy at one point. There you go. Isn't that good? That was good stuff. All right. Um, and so, you know, how, how is this going to look when you go to build your application? You've only got one project. How does it know which platform you're targeting? Well, any platform that you uh, are able to run, it's going to give you an option for it. And then anything that you need to add beyond that, you'll have the option to add. Um, so in this particular case, you see that I can run this, this app on Windows, Android, or iOS. And it knows that my phone's attached, which is fantastic. All right. So uh, I want to highlight some things that are really more for contributors. And I think I'm kind of at time, so, but I'm close to being done. So stick with me. This is good stuff. So for the contributors, what are we doing to make this more awesome for you? But I think this also applies to developers. Um, so when you come to the Xamarin Forms repo today, <laughs> I just look young, Ali. Ali's saying, why does David look as old as me and his daughter got married? Yeah. I, well, I also did marry my high school sweetheart. So, so there's that. Been married 25 years this year. Woohoo! Uh, actually, what is this, October? Yeah, I've got a month and 18 days till my anniversary. All right. Uh, so back to the topic. Um, thank you for telling me I look young. I appreciate that. That's very helpful. So you go to the Xamarin Forms repo today and you're greeted with uh, a rather <laughs> uh, lengthy list of folders and projects, and it can be quite overwhelming. We've heard this loud and clear. And so what we have done, and you can see this now if you go to .NET MAUI, is uh, Shane has worked with the team and done a restructuring. And this is a restructuring based on the pattern of what we see on other .NET repositories. So this, again, aligns with, hey, if you know how to navigate uh, the, the .NET Core, the ASP.NET Core uh, repositories, et cetera, then this should look familiar to you. You should be able to find your way around. Uh, we're using similar patterns. So. I love that uh, even in the first iteration of this, we've greatly reduced the complexity at the top level. And then as you get into it, you know, I dug down into the source for the platform handlers, and then I went into the source for the um, Xamarin handlers, and then I'm looking at that particular button. So these are the Xamarin form specific pieces. Um, or actually, no, I take that back. These are just the buttons. Yes. So, but you can see that we're using multi targeting here. All the button code is all in one place for how these things behave across all those platforms, whereas previously you would have had to um, hunted and hoped that they were named the same across the different instances. Um, so this is a whole lot cleaner. Birthday on November the 19th, Denny? No, no. Anniversary on the 18th. Yeah, close. Good, good math. Your math is probably better than what I described. Um, so I think this is a whole lot cleaner, a whole lot easier to look look at, and uh, hopefully contributors will will think so too. But we need your feedback. So if you're a contributor and, and you have been frustrated with organization of the uh, solution and the projects, let us know. All right. So with that, uh, I will highlight a couple of the experiments. You probably are mostly aware of these things. 
Um, Blazer, a very exciting one. Matter of fact, had a call with a customer yesterday who was super excited about this. We we find that a lot of uh, developers and companies that have investment across web and desktop and mobile are really attracted to this idea of being able to reuse their Blazor knowledge, share their state between hybrid web hosted content, as well as leveraging all the native UI and cross-platform APIs that you get with .NET, Maui, and Xamarin. So in this particular case, you see the top is native UI, the bottom is web UI. Uh, this is the experimental Blazor mobile bindings project. You can find it up on GitHub. I didn't actually put a link to it here, sorry about that. Um, but you can find a couple of blogs from Alon Lipton up on the .NET blog. And uh, you can quickly get started with that. You know, if you're a XAML developer, but you're interested in Razor and you've often wanted to be able to co-mingle some C Sharp in with your markup, uh, you'll love Razor templates. Um, if you are a, a true born and bred XAML developer, you probably think Razor templates are an abomination. The good news is, is that we are accepting and welp welcoming to all. And, uh, you know, there's benefits to, to each and every. Um, and so just because somebody else wants to use uh, one pattern, another person wants to use another pattern, it's all good. It's all .NET. We love it. So uh, so there's that. And then there's also the Comet MVU experiment from James Clancy, which hopefully he showed off earlier today. I don't know if he did, but uh, very exciting stuff. So if, if you're really attracted to things like Swift UI um, or to uh, Flutter, for that matter, writing things all in code and Dart, um, then this may be more up your alley. Uh, it's a unidirectional flow of state. So really this, this uh, view uh, method, which you can't see the top of it there, but um, that, oh, there it is. Hey, look, there's the view method on queue. Uh, that's uh, anytime a message is passed and the state changes, it reruns that puppy. It evaluates the changes to your UI. Excuse me, I'm about to sneeze. Um, and applies just the changes. So uh, it's very performant. It's working kind of against a shadow UI tree. Um, very performant and uh, nice fluent syntax uh, to be able to use here. So one of the things we hope to see in the Xamarin Community Toolkit with the C-sharp UI extensions that you may use today in Xamarin Forms is uh, kind of a, a coalescing, a coming together of the APIs between what James has been experimenting with here and what Vincent has uh, introduced into the ecosystem. Um, and so uh, would love to see that continue to innovate, which is why uh, actually the community toolkit's the perfect place for that particular feature to land so it can continue to grow and innovate. All right, so just a couple more slides. Uh, in terms of dates, let's see, are these dates all still accurate? Yes, so November, 2020, uh, that's next month. .NET 5 is shipping. Um, very cool. So Xamarin works in .NET 5, uh, but what the, the case is, is that um, you're not going to get AOT, you're not going to get linkers and all that sort of thing. So for mobile uh, development, you don't want to use .NET 5 with your Xamarin, Xamarin Forms applications. You want to be using uh, the current bits that you've got. And then uh, when we get to .NET 6, then that's your moment uh, to jump on the, on that train. Um, so really for your development experience, yes, you'll have to wait a little bit on some C-sharp uh, syntax goodness, but um, it's all coming. It's all good. Um, so uh, we're, we're going to be shipping previews coming up. I didn't actually put that on the slide here. I apologize. Um, so we'll start, uh, you know, the code is up, I guess. So um, the code is up on .NET MAUI. Uh, you can also find it in the main handlers branch right now on the Xamarin Forms repository, which is really where the code is being worked on, and then it's being shipped over. Um, uh, but we're going to do some demos at .NET Conf, which takes me to my next slide. Um, so make sure to tune in to .NET Conf. We'll show off all the latest Xamarin Forms related five stuff, um, which is really exciting. By that point, we'll, we'll be in stable release. I don't want to jinx it, but we'll be in stable release. And then, uh, but we're gonna we're gonna definitely aim to demo the status of where we stand with all of our .NET Maui work. Show you how things are going with the new handlers. Um, hopefully, have some nice performance benchmarks to share with you. I'm really geared up for that. Um, certainly, that's a big focus for us. Um, and then we'll see how much of the design stuff we'll be able to show at that point. But it's going to be the first time that you'll really be able to see and and you know clone, get your hands on some things. Um, and then we'll actually have uh, bits shipping 
uh, in Q1 of 2021 is really when the, the easier thing, right? You just go install the new .NET and you do a .NET install, .NET MAUI or whatever and, and do the templates that way. So if you want to wait for the easy stuff, then Q1 is your is your time frame to start seeing previews. If you are a super early adopter and you want to get um, a little cut up and bloody and you don't mind uh, being frustrated, then uh, go on up to the repository and clone it uh, at any point. Um, I have not done that. It's probably a pain right now. Um, I'm not up for the frustration at the moment, so I'm going to wait a little bit. All right. So I do have some FAQs and some worries. So I'll run through these real quick because some of these may have come up in the chat. But uh, now is your time to start throwing some questions in there, and I'll hang around for a little bit longer. Should I use Xamarin Forms now or wait for .NET MAUI? Of course you should use Xamarin Forms now. Of course. Your project will upgrade to .NET MAUI. Don't worry about it. it it'll be fine. Uh, will you migrate my solution to single project? Nope. Not going to do that. Um, you don't need to. Uh, your existing projects will continue to work, um, so don't worry about it. Um, we will migrate your projects to the new common project system and to use .NET 6 for sure. Um, and then we'll provide documentation. If you really want to take advantage of the single project stuff, there's some manual moving of files that you're going to want to do, and you're going to want to be hands-on with that. Yeah, You don't want us trying to provide a magic wand to get everybody's projects into a single project. Um, Multi projects, multi headed projects continue to work. You can continue to use them that way. If you really like that, don't worry. But single project is, is an option, and we think it's going to be a nice option. Um, let's see. Do I need to re rewrite custom renderers? Nope. We're going to make sure your renderers still work, but you're going to want to migrate those um, to, to at your convenience to take advantage of the new performance and the new memory footprint characteristics that .NET MAUI is improving upon. Will your third-party libraries continue to work? Yeah. Um, at a minimum, they'll need to be recompiled to target the new .NET 6 and have the new target framework monikers and things like that so that your, uh, your MS build and whatnot knows that it works with .NET 6. Um, the UI libraries will be able to take advantage of that same migration path uh, to using the new handler pattern. Um, or they can shim and use the uh, old legacy renderers. That's entirely up to you. Um, will .NET MAUI run on Linux? This question comes up a lot. Um, Linux is not a supported platform in this version of .NET MAUI. Uh, we don't have plans in this, in this phase of .NET 6, this wave we call it, to light up Linux and focus on that. There is an official backend. It uses GDK. Um, I've seen some that say that's fine, uh, others that want uh, a different UI framework used. But it is there, and so if that's something of interest to you and you're an open source Linux developer, then please contribute. I think that people would love to see that move forward. What flavor of XAML will .NET MAUI uh, use? The same XAML you use today in Xamarin Forms. Uh, that's our starting point. Now, will we uh, align with some of the syntax things that you get in WPF or in WinUI 3? Uh, those proposals are out there, and uh, we uh, will talk about those things at a later date. Um, but it's not a decision that we are uh, trying to make up front right now. So uh, we're, we're certainly learning and listening. Most uh, Xamarin developers that we talk to uh, would like to see less disruption and more consistency and stability. So that's where our head's at right now. Um, but we're certainly open to it. If there's a key reason for things, um, then we will do it. Where can I follow the progress? Go on up to github.net Maui. Um, as I mentioned, it's refreshed regularly from the Xamarin Forms repo, from that main handler branch is the current working branch. You can also see a lot of open PRs. Uh, a lot of Javier's handler work is up, and you can, you know, if you're super curious and you've got time on your hands, you can go read what that stuff looks like. All right. What other questions in the chat? Oh, my god, This was fun. I thought I would, you would never stop talking. I know. How's it going, Gerald? Good to see you. So I outlasted <laughs> Bart, and now I've got Gerald. Yeah? Yeah, he's he's gone. He was like, I can't take this anymore. So here I am, <laughs> you know. Good. All right. Did I? Did you were. I saw you were in the chat. I think. Did I miss any questions that you think I need to address? Uh, so one thing actually that I'm wondering myself is, my, to, to my knowledge, there will be a preview of .NET six with the first Maui bits, like around the time .NET five lands. Is that still accurate? 
So the so let's so just basically back the question up a little is, bit. When can we start using start digging into a little bit? Right. More. When you can start digging into builds is going to be Q1, like January, February of 2021. Um, I have not heard other information that they're going to actually distribute a .NET 6 build any earlier than okay. that. Um, but today, there is a .NET 6 repository. Uh, you can clone it. You can build it. Um, we are currently doing that. And there is a .NET 6 samples repository on the Xamarin org on GitHub, where Jonathan Peppers and Rolf and others are constantly rebuilding our samples, identifying problems, reporting them back to the mono.net teams and things like that. So um, my understanding is it's all code that you can clone and use through the end of the year, but we're not shipping installs until Q1. Right, right, right. right. So uh, one important question that is repeated by Dan, when are we getting a logo for .NET Maui? <laughs> I, you know, I don't know. I don't know. For now, I think I know. I'm using the Maui bot, and and we'll put we'll put lays on the monkeys, and that, actually, actually, I've got even got my my lay right here. We were in a we were in a stand up for the forums team, and See? like two or three of us pulled out pulled out these, and the new engineer on the team was like, "What did I just? Do? <laughs> what just happened?" So there you go. Yeah, yeah. So I think, you know, looking at the other .NET project, because the whole transition to .NET MAUI is about, you know, um, Xamarin and Xamarin forms becoming a uh, first-class citizen of the whole .NET ecosystem, right? So, uh, which is great, which shows commitment, I think. Uh, but on the other hand, it will lose a little bit of that um, own identity, right? So we're probably going to lose that. And I'm not sure if we're going to have a separate logo for that because, you know, ASP.NET, all the things don't really have their own logo, right? So uh, to be honest, for me personally, that is something that, you know, look here, we can do all the cool things with the, the Xamarin stuff. Uh, so it's 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 sad to lose those things, but, uh, you know, it's it's for the, the greater good, so. Yeah, we'll see. Hold out some hope. Exactly, exactly. You know, we'll just come up with our own logo. We have the Xamarin Community Toolkit. We'll, we'll make our own. You know, if they can't do it, we'll do it. No problem. Absolutely. And I love that new logo on the community toolkit. I hope everybody has gone over there and starred that re repo and it's Hacktoberfest. I understand there's a little bit of a uh, kerfuffle in the communities around uh, bogus PRs and people trying to game the system for Hacktoberfest, but yep. uh, you know, we'll, we'll just reject your PRs, right. And, and take, take the good ones, but come yep. submit some yep. good PRs. We got mm -hmm. monkeys on the line. We got, uh, we got t-shirts probably. So Blog a post coming stuff. out, Stan. Yep, yep, yep. You've heard it here first. There's a blog post coming. Uh, all right. So thank you so much, David. I think uh, you, we we're already a little bit over time, but you know, for a topic like this, that is no problem. So I'm just going to let you go. Um, okay. Have a cool uh, rest of your day. And I'm going to round this uh, uh, fantastic day off with the rest of the team. So thank you so much. And I'll talk Thanks. to you later.